beautiful, boundless, mysterious. There are many ways you can describe the expansive space called our universe. There is absolutely nothing like it. Everywhere you look, there is something different and incredible to be found, and discovering what lies far beyond our planet sort of makes life here on Earth more interesting. But beneath all that beauty, there are objects powerful enough to wipe out human existence and even destroy our solar system. These are the deadliest objects lurking in our universe, and one of them is much closer to us than you realize. Black holes, they will suck you right up. The nearest star to us, the Proxima Centauri, is 4.24 light years away. If we had the technology to travel through the universe, it would still take us 950 million years to get anywhere close to it. Despite being so far away, stars burn brightly in the night sky and continue to burn for millions of years. But even the brightest stars burn out eventually. When it no longer has enough fuel to support its own weight, the star falls inward, creating what we call a black hole. Nothing escapes from a black hole. Not asteroids, planets, gas, stars, or even light can escape its void. It is this deep, dark void of nothingness where matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. The only part of a black hole we can see is the event horizon. After that point, we cannot see what goes on inside and can only understand its impact based on its surroundings. When something gets sucked in, it collapses into the black hole's singularity, a point where the laws of physics and time are obliterated and nothing that goes in ever comes out. There are millions of black holes scattered throughout the universe, ranging from those the size of our sun to masses far bigger and much more dangerous. The smallest black hole is the equivalent of 333,000 Earths put together. That's a lot, but the good thing is, most times, these black holes stay in the place they were born, only devouring the elements that cannot resist its gravitational pull. Violent stellar events, like the collision of two galaxies, can send black holes spiraling through space at incredible speeds. And for an object that can absorb light itself, it wouldn't be easy scratch that. It would be impossible for even the best scientists to track its movement. If one of these rogue black holes ever reaches our solar system, the havoc it would wreak is unimaginable. Planets will slowly fall out of balance and the debris it picked up along the way would be flung at planets, leaving the black hole to pick up the pieces. As it consumes asteroids, gas and planets, the black hole will keep growing bigger until Earth finally gets caught in its path of destruction. Its powerful gravity will stretch the Earth like Play-Doh, creating tidal waves no one can escape from. That's if Earth is not already destroyed by some rogue planet smashing into it. Will a black hole be heading for Earth anytime soon? The chances are slim and it is hard to guard against something you cannot see. And this isn't the only time we will come face to face with something we can't stop. Because black holes aren't the only things born from the death of a star. Supernova when it all goes boom! A star is formed from an interstellar event so grand that it takes over 10 million years for a large star to be born. So, it is only fitting that its death is equally as spectacular, ending in an explosion that sends off blast waves and radiation far into space. If by chance a supernova explosion were to occur, let's say 50 light years from Earth, then it's bye-bye. You wouldn't even realize what happened. In just a fraction of a second, the Earth would lose its atmosphere and the shock waves from the explosion would be enough to wipe out oceans. If life survives, the intense radiation blasts will carry high levels of neutrinos that can boil any living thing inside out. And if we still manage to survive that, against all odds, then deadly amounts of UV radiation from the sun 
will finish the job. Plain and simple, but supernovas aren't that bad. The last time a supernova exploded so close to Earth, some 20 million years ago, it shaped our solar system into what it is today. Without it, we wouldn't have gold bling for our phones and jewelry, or uranium for nuclear reactors. Most of the materials that form the Sun and some planets in our solar system were ejected by supernovas several billion years ago. And those planets would not be here otherwise. So, maybe we should thank our lucky stars literally. But are supernovas something we should really worry about? Well, yes and no. Supernovae do occur in the Milky Way once every 50 years. But there are no stars in the Milky Way massive enough to pose a serious threat to us. Fortunately, the only two large stars we have to worry about, the Antares and Betelgeuse, are over 500 light years away and will go supernova in the next million years or so. When Betelgeuse goes supernova, it will be the brightest star in our sky, second only to the Sun and will be bright enough to cast shadows in the middle of the night. Scientists have not yet found a massive star close enough to do much damage, but there is one in our solar system that we can do nothing about if it ever went out of control, and that's the sun. The sun, our big ball of fire, will burn you up. On one hand, our planet can never survive without the sun. No planet in our solar system can. But that super-hot burning ball of plasma at the center of our solar system is also a ticking time bomb and one that we cannot escape from. While humans have come up with creative ways to deal with most natural disasters here on Earth, there is little to nothing we can do about the threat of the Sun. Solar flares heat up the ionosphere, mess with our satellites and disrupt communications. If one were to hit us hard enough, it would do more than cause pretty aurora displays in the sky. Solar flares can't do much to Earth on its own, but the giant clouds of hot plasma and electromagnetic radiation it generates can. This is called coronal mass ejection, or CME. Earlier this year, a CME merely grazed the Earth's magnetic field and is not expected to have much effect except for the mesmerizing auroras. But we were not this lucky back in 1859. 18 hours after the CME hit Earth, telegraph networks went haywire. The telegraph was the most innovative technology at the time, and if you look around today, our technology isn't that modest anymore. Every aspect of our lives runs on electricity and technology. So, imagine what would happen if the same thing happened today. It would plunge Earth into darkness for months, if not years, and set fires across borders. It would take a while for us to recover what was lost, but humans always find a way to beat the odds and rebuild. So, we can always get back the technology we've lost and come back even stronger. But not every stellar event will have this effect. Gamma ray bursts. Bad. Very, very bad. Gamma rays don't act the way you would expect them to. It won't start forest fires or burn our electronics to the ground. We wouldn't be blasted into oblivion and don't expect the oceans to act up either. Gamma ray bursts are more subtle and you can even say the most deadly of them all. When two neutron stars collide, or a black hole swallows a neutron star, gamma rays are formed from the chaos. They are the most energetic explosions in the universe, and for a split second, it releases more energy than the sun will in its lifetime. It makes a supernova look like child's play. They are outside the spectrum of visible light, and you can't see them with your naked eye, but you don't have to see it to feel it. If gamma rays hit Earth, they would kill off life on the side of the planet exposed to it, or at the very least, push it to the brink of extinction. Our ozone layer would be completely stripped away. Plants will die from the attack, taking along with it oxygen vital to our existence. Without plants, both humans and animals would starve, 
That is if the harsh weather doesn't have its way first. There is some good news though. Gamma ray bursts are very narrow. Narrow enough that it might just pass by with no significant damage and Earth will once again escape destruction. But with an asteroid attack, we aren't going to be as lucky. Asteroids, a bad way to get stoned. Imagine walking down the street only to see a 330 foot long asteroid heading straight at you. Once the asteroid is big enough to pass through the mesosphere without burning up, it only takes about five seconds for it to reach the Earth's surface. Just enough time to see your life flash before your eyes. Dust, meteoroids and small asteroids hit Earth all the time. But they disintegrate in the mesosphere and create beautiful shooting stars across the sky. Asteroids the size of a car also come close to Earth once a year. But the Earth's atmosphere is powerful enough to stop it from doing any damage to the surface. The ones we do have to worry about are asteroids, the size of a football field. And you don't want to be making a wish when it arrives. But it all boils down to where it lands. If the asteroid were to fall into the ocean, or let's say, land in a desert somewhere across the planet, then we would be safe for the most part. But if it were to land in a populated city like New York or London, then we are looking at casualties in millions. It would destroy everything in a 15 kilometers radius and windows more than 100 kilometer away would shatter from the sheer force of its impact. It's hard to truly understand how precarious Earth's position is in the universe. One little thing out of place and there isn't much we can do to stop what happens next. But which of these do you think is the most deadly object in the universe? Share your thoughts in the comments.